Hi everyone. The HMS Endeavour was a research vessel commissioned by the British Royal Navy in 1768. Led by Captain James Cook, it embarked on a scientific expedition to observe the transit of Venus and explore the Pacific Ocean. The ship charted the coasts of New Zealand and Australia, made significant botanical discoveries, and had encounters with Pacific Island cultures. After completing its first voyage in 1771, the ship went through subsequent journeys under different commanders. Construction Type and Size the HMS Endeavour was initially a collier ship, a type of merchant vessel used for transporting coal. It was built in Whitby, England, in 1764 and measured approximately 32 metres, 105 feet in length. The ship had a displacement of around 368 tonnes. Three-masted bark. The Endeavour was a three-masted bark. Each mast carried multiple square sails, providing the ship with the ability to maneuver in various wind conditions. Hull and Structure The ship had a sturdy hull made of oak, a common material for naval construction at the time. The hull was strengthened with diagonal cross bracing and internal iron work to withstand the strain of ocean voyages. High Gun Deck and Bulwarks The HMS Endeavour had a high gun deck which provided an elevated platform for mounting cannons. The gun deck was enclosed by bulwarks, which were protective walls along the sides of the ship, offering some shelter to the crew during rough weather. Crew Accommodations The Endeavour was not designed for comfort, as its primary purpose was scientific exploration. Crew accommodations were basic, with cramped quarters below deck. The officers had separate cabins, while the crew slept in hammocks or on the deck in fair weather. Armament During its scientific mission, the Endeavour carried a relatively light armament. It was equipped with ten cannons, mainly for self-defense against potential hostilities encountered during the voyage. Rigging and sails The ship had a complex rigging system consisting of multiple masts, yards, and lines. The sails were primarily square-rigged, meaning they were rectangular in shape and attached to the yards horizontally. This rigging allowed for better maneuverability in sailing against the wind. Rebuild and Modifications After its first voyage, the Endeavour was sold into private hands and underwent several modifications. It was converted into a troop transport ship and later renamed the Lord Sandwich. These modifications altered the ship's appearance and original design. The construction and design of the HMS Endeavour reflected the practical requirements of an exploration and research vessel. While not a large or luxurious ship, its sturdy construction and sailing capabilities allowed Captain Cook and his crew to navigate the treacherous waters of the Pacific and make significant discoveries during their voyage. Purchase and refit by the Admiralty. In 1768, the British Admiralty purchased the collier ship Earl of Pembroke and renamed it HMS Endeavour. The decision to acquire the ship was made to support a scientific expedition to the Pacific Ocean led by Captain James Cook. After acquiring the Endeavour, the Admiralty initiated a significant refit to prepare the ship for its scientific mission. The refit involved making alterations to accommodate the scientific instruments and equipment needed for the voyage. The Admiralty outfitted the Endeavour with various scientific instruments, including telescopes, chronometers, and other navigational tools. These instruments were crucial for conducting astronomical observations and accurate mapping during the expedition. As the ship was expected to be away for an extended period, the Admiralty ensured that the Endeavour was stocked with ample provisions for the crew and the scientists on board. This included food, water, medical supplies, and other essential items required for the voyage. The Admiralty played a significant role in recruiting the crew and scientists for the Endeavour's expedition. Captain Cook was appointed to lead the voyage and the crew was selected based on their experience and expertise in navigation, sailing, and scientific disciplines. First Voyage of James Cook 
After the necessary preparations were completed, the first voyage of James Cook on the HMS Endeavour began on August 26, 1768, from Plymouth, England. The ship's primary objective was to observe the transit of Venus from Tahiti, which would help calculate the distance between the Earth and the Sun. After a long journey, the Endeavour reached Tahiti in April 1769. On June 3, 1769, the transit of Venus occurred, and Cook and his crew successfully made the observations. It was a rare astronomical phenomenon where Venus passed directly between the Earth and the Sun, appearing as a small dark dot moving across the Sun's disk. Why did it happen? The transit occurs in pairs, approximately eight years apart, with more than a century between pairs. Scientists were interested in observing this event because it provided an opportunity to measure the distance between the Earth and the Sun, known as the astronomical unit. Understanding the AU was crucial for developing more accurate celestial navigation and determining the scale of the solar system. How was it observed? During the transit, scientists and astronomers from different parts of the world set up observation stations to carefully measure the time it took for Venus to cross the Sun's disk. By having observations from various locations on Earth, they could use parallax to calculate the distance to Venus and, subsequently, the distance from Earth to the Sun. Captain James Cook was tasked by the Royal Society of London to observe the transit of Venus from Tahiti in the South Pacific. Cook and his crew arrived in Tahiti in April 1769 and set up a well-equipped observation site. They meticulously recorded the timings of the transit with precision. Data and its significance. The data collected from various observation points, including Cook's expedition, allowed scientists to calculate the astronomical unit, providing the first reliable measurement of the Earth-Sun distance. This not only advanced our understanding of the solar system's scale but also had practical implications for navigation and exploration. Impact and Legacy the success of James Cook's observation of the transit of Venus, along with other observations made during his first voyage, greatly contributed to advancements in astronomy, navigation, and cartography. It also played a crucial role in the subsequent voyages of exploration that followed, helping sailors navigate more accurately and reach distant lands with greater confidence. Exploration of New Zealand after completing the observations in Tahiti, Cook continued his exploration of the Pacific. The endeavor reached the coast of New Zealand in October 1769. He initially explored the eastern coastline of the North Island and then continued his exploration along the coast of the South Island. During his journey, Cook charted and mapped numerous locations, bays, and harbors along the coast. As Cook and his crew explored New Zealand, they encountered the indigenous Maori people. Cook was the first European explorer to make contact with the Maori. He approached these interactions with respect and caution, attempting to establish peaceful relations with the local population. Some interactions with the Maori were amicable, involving exchanges of goods and information. However, there were also instances of conflict and misunderstandings, as both sides struggled to understand each other's cultural norms and practices. One of the most important outcomes of Cook's exploration was the detailed mapping and charting of the New Zealand coastline. Cook's accurate and comprehensive charts provided valuable information for future navigators and explorers, significantly improving the accuracy of navigation in the region. The map of New Zealand produced during Cook's first voyage became the basis for subsequent European maps of the country. It helped to dispel myths about the existence of a large southern continent and contributed to a more accurate understanding of the geography of the South Pacific. Aside from his mapping efforts, Cook and his team made significant contributions to the fields of botany, astronomy, and ethnography during their time in New Zealand. They collected and documented various plant and animal species, 
as well as observed and recorded celestial events and the transit of Mercury. Leaving New Zealand, Cook set sail to search for the rumored southern continent, Terra Australis Incognita. During the 18th century, European explorers believed in the existence of a large southern land mass, often referred to as Terra Australis Incognita. It was believed that such a continent could balance the land masses in the northern hemisphere and was an important concept in geographical theories of the time. Cook was tasked by the Royal Society of London to search for this unknown southern continent. On April 19, 1770, Cook and his crew sighted the east coast of Australia, which they initially called New South Wales. Cook's expedition became the first recorded Europeans to make contact with the eastern coastline of Australia. Over the following weeks, the endeavour explored and mapped various sections of the east coast. Cook and his crew produced detailed charts and maps of the Australian coastline, significantly improving navigational knowledge of the region. His accurate charts were invaluable for future explorers, traders, and settlers. By setting foot on the east coast of Australia, Cook claimed the land for Great Britain. This initial contact laid the groundwork for the later colonisation of Australia by the British. Cook and his team made extensive botanical and zoological collections, documenting various plant and animal species previously unknown to Europeans. During their exploration, Cook and his crew encountered indigenous Australian peoples, including the Guiagol people at Botany Bay. Cook and his team conducted scientific observations, including measurements of latitude, longitude, and magnetic variation, which were significant contributions to the scientific community. Cook's voyage to the east coast of Australia was a turning point in the history of Australia. His detailed charts and scientific observations helped to dispel the notion of a large southern continent and brought Australia to the attention of the European powers. The information gathered during the voyage paved the way for future British exploration, colonisation, and eventual settlement of Australia. The Great Barrier Reef incident was a significant event during the first voyage of Captain James Cook in 1770. After exploring the east coast of Australia and charting its coastline, Cook decided to head north, hoping to find a passage that would allow him to sail back to England through the Torres Strait. He believed that a passage might exist between New Guinea and the northern coast of Australia, and he wanted to investigate further. On June 11, 1770, the HMS Endeavour struck the Great Barrier Reef near what is now known as the present-day Cooktown, Queensland. The Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest coral reef system in the world, posed a significant threat to the ship and its crew. The Endeavour's hull was pierced, and it started taking on water, risking the safety of everyone on board. Immediately after the incident, Cook and his crew worked tirelessly to save the ship and its valuable cargo. They used anchors, ropes, and even ballast stones to try to stabilize the ship and prevent further damage. They also lightened the load by throwing overboard anything non-essential to keep the ship afloat. During high tide, the crew managed to refloat the Endeavour, but it was still in dire need of repair. Cook navigated the damaged ship into a nearby river, now known as the Endeavour River, where they could safely beach the vessel for extensive repairs. Over the course of seven weeks, Cook and his team repaired the Endeavour, patching up the hull and undertaking thorough maintenance. They also made observations and collected scientific specimens from the surrounding area during this time. The Endeavour's recovery and eventual successful return to England were testaments to the resourcefulness and determination of Cook and his skilled crew. After leaving the Endeavour River on August 4, 1770, Cook continued his exploration, eventually sailing through the Torres Strait and completing the circumnavigation of Australia. Despite the challenges posed by the Great Barrier Reef incident, Cook's careful navigation, leadership, 
and problem-solving skills ensured the safety of his crew and the survival of the HMS Endeavour. Following the repairs at the Endeavour River in present-day Queensland, Australia, Cook continued his exploration. He sailed north along the east coast of Australia and navigated through the Torres Strait, a narrow passage between the northern tip of Australia and the southern coast of New Guinea. This route allowed him to confirm that Australia was not connected to a vast southern continent, as some had previously speculated. After passing through the Torres Strait, Cook sailed westward and explored the islands of Timor and Batavia, now Jakarta, Indonesia. From there, he crossed the Indian Ocean, rounding the southern tip of Africa, and made his way back to England. James Cook and the HMS Endeavour arrived back in England on July 12, 1771, completing the momentous first voyage that had lasted almost three years. Cook's safe return was a remarkable achievement considering the many challenges he had faced during the expedition. Upon his return, James Cook and his crew were hailed as heroes and celebrated for their groundbreaking achievements. The voyage had provided significant contributions to geography, navigation, and science. The accurate and detailed charts, maps, and scientific observations made during the expedition were highly valuable to the Royal Society and the British Admiralty. Cook's meticulous documentation of the lands he explored, as well as the flora and fauna he encountered, greatly expanded the knowledge of the South Pacific region. His success in navigating through treacherous waters, such as the Great Barrier Reef and Torres Strait, demonstrated his exceptional skills as a navigator and explorer. In recognition of his achievements, James Cook was promoted to the rank of commander. Additionally, he was elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1771, a prestigious honor acknowledging his significant contributions to science and exploration. Furthermore, Cook was appointed to lead a second voyage, known as the Second Voyage of James Cook or the Resolution Expedition. This voyage aimed to further explore the South Pacific. Overall, the return of James Cook and the HMS Endeavour to England marked the end of a groundbreaking expedition, leaving a lasting legacy in the realms of exploration, cartography, and scientific discovery. Later Service after returning to England in July 1771, the HMS Endeavour underwent repairs and was recommissioned for further exploration. The ship was renamed the Lord Sandwich and set sail on a voyage to the Falkland Islands under the command of Captain Tobias Furneaux. The purpose of this expedition was to establish a British presence and conduct survey work in the region. During the voyage to the Falkland Islands, the Lord Sandwich, Formerly HMS Endeavour became separated from its sister ship, HMS Adventure, commanded by Captain Furno. The Lord Sandwich continued its journey independently and completed a circumnavigation of the globe, making numerous stops and discoveries along the way. In 1773, the Lord Sandwich was reassigned to the Royal Navy's Jamaican Station, where it was involved in patrolling and enforcing British naval dominance in the Caribbean. The ship continued to serve in this capacity for several years. In 1775, the Lord Sandwich was transferred to the transport service and used primarily as a troop transport ship during the American Revolutionary War. It played a role in transporting troops and supplies to various theatres of the conflict. The precise fate of the Lord Sandwich, formerly HMS Endeavour, is uncertain. In 1778, the ship was sold out of service and likely underwent further modifications and repurposing. It is believed that the vessel was eventually broken up and its timbers used for other construction projects. Despite its eventual fate and name changes, the HMS Endeavour remains an iconic vessel due to its association with Captain James Cook and the significant achievements made during its first voyage. The ship's contributions to scientific exploration, mapping, and cultural encounters in the Pacific continue to be recognized and celebrated.
The history of the HMS Endeavour after its return from the first voyage of James Cook involves further exploration, reassignment, and eventual repurposing as a troop transport ship. While its exact fate may be uncertain, the legacy of the vessel as a symbol of exploration and discovery remains significant. The Endeavour replica faithfully replicates the appearance and design of the original ship, allowing visitors to experience what life was like on board during Cook's historic voyage. It has become a popular tourist attraction and educational tool, offering visitors a glimpse into the challenges and triumphs of 18th century exploration. The replica has been used for various purposes, including educational programs, maritime festivals, and historical reenactments. It has also undertaken several voyages to recreate parts of Cook's original journey, helping to promote an understanding of the historical significance of Cook's exploration and the cultural exchange between Europeans and indigenous peoples. The replica HMS Endeavour serves as a living history museum, keeping the legacy of James Cook and his voyages alive, and allowing people to connect with the past in a tangible and immersive way. Thanks for watching.